My club has 19 Premier League titles. And did I mention I'm worth 2.14 billion? Oh yeah? Well, my club has 20 Premier League titles. And might I mention my family is worth 3.5 billion? So in your face, Liverpool. United, please, tell me the last time you guys actually won the title. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I'm worth 22.9 billion. City, I wouldn't talk. How exactly did all that money help you in last year's Champions League final? It's not all about the money now, is it? But it doesn't straight to be worth 9.6 billion. Feels good. Feels real good. Well, I don't quite know about all this title talk y'all speak of, but I know y'all stadiums are old and smelly as shit. My 3.6 billion funded an absolutely modern state-of-the-art facility y'all can only dream of. Oh, here we go again. How many times do I have to tell you nobody is a Spurs fan? North London will always be Red, your own homegrown striker doesn't even want any part of you anymore. And I spent the most money on transfers last window, so my 6.35 billion is not too shabby after all. Hey guys, we're new here, and uh, I overheard you all talking, and I just want to say, we're 13 times richer than all of you. We'll send a postcard from the summit. By now, I am sure that every footballing fan has heard of the insane breaking news. Newcastle United has been bought by the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, making the club wealthy beyond the imagination of the other billionaire club owners in the Premier League. This is absolutely game-changing news and the sports books have already taken notes. New betting odds have sprung to life. Some have Newcastle United winning the Premier League in just five seasons, while others have them being title contenders for the Champions League in just four and that is why we are here today boys to test a takeover of this magnitude for ourselves today we rebuild newcastle united and here we go boys selecting newcastle united you see they have a club worth of 595 million however i think that the saudi arabian uh investment fund i think they bought it for what 300 maybe it was 400 million uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but yeah, the transfer budget in this game at least is 39 million. I think that's dollars. We're going to be changing that to euros or pounds soon. But yeah, 39 million is nothing compared to what we're about to have. And by the way, don't mind my hat. It just feels so much more comfortable like this. And this is the big one, boys. Financial takeover. You know we are doing this. And the question is, how much are we going to give ourselves? I think the max we can do is 1 billion. Yes, it is. I'm tempted to do the billion. You know what? I think we're going to do 500 million. I think 500 million is about what Newcastle's hierarchies are going to spend uh, during the next transfer window, maybe next summer. I think 500 million is going to be perfect. That's going to be able to get us some great players to start with. So let's go, boys. The Newcastle takeover begins right now. This is the first time that we get a close look at the Newcastle United squad. And I'm not really a Newcastle United follower or supporter or anything. So I don't know the team all that well. I only know of St. Maximon, uh, Wilson, and Willock. And I know of Matt, Matty Longstaff. Matty Longstaff I use a lot in my rebuilds. Um, he's a good guy to use in rebuilds. But otherwise, I don't really know the team. I've heard of Dubrovka, the goalkeeper. He's actually the highest rated guy on this squad at an 81 overall but um looking at this squad right now it's actually a very young team it's an exciting team except for the defense the defense really needs a uh a real kick in the ass because looking at the left wing back 31 years old 74 that's not gonna cut it center back 32 years old 75 not gonna cut it 77 the captain he's 27 years old okay i think we can keep this guy this year 76 overall 29 years old not gonna cut it 74 overall right back probably not gonna cut it too much and we got a decent bench here we actually have a huge squad this squad is a big squad so we might be able to get a lot of player sales if we need to but otherwise i'm liking the midfield and the striking core i might look for a different formation that can fit this squad better because St. Maximon's a left mid in the game. He doesn't play striker even though he's got the pace that can play striker up there. And taking a look at possible uh, alternate formations from that like 5-3-2. I'm thinking we go with this. What is this called? The four. I'm thinking we go with the normal four at the back. One CDM, two cams here, Almirion and Willock, and then a right mid Frazier, left mid St. Maximon, and Callum Wilson at the top. Um, I think this is 
right now at least with the squad we have right now this is the perfect lineup the perfect formation we're gonna look for some new players to bring into this newcastle united squad remember we have 500 million to play with so next up we need two boys of course Go through and put development plans on every single player, even if we plan on selling them. Odds are most of these players are going to be gone by the end of this transfer window because this this window is when we are making the most changes, most definitely. And after allocating development plans to every single player on this squad, trust me, there are a shit ton of players on this squad. Um, but first up, I want to um, transfer list some guys like... We don't need all these goalkeepers on here. I'm thinking we're going to get a new goalkeeper, but we're going to keep Dubrovka as the backup. And then we are going to sell these other guys. Actually, I might loan this this guy because he's kind of young. Same with this guy. But um, someone like Darlow here, he's gone, bro. Let's make a little bit of money off of him and then sell him. We need a new left back, so I'm going to transfer list Matt Ritchie here. He's not in my plans moving forward. Straight away, I think we go big, boys. I think we go for somebody who in real life wants out of their current situation. And that is Matthias Delict on Piemonte Calcio on Juventus in real life. Um, he's just not been living up to his potential. There was rumors that he wanted to go to Barcelona um, to be with Frankie de Jong, his Netherlands teammate. Um, but today, since we are controlling Newcastle and since we have 500 million in the bank, I think we make a splash right away and we go for Delict. He's an 85 overall, 21-year-old center back. He is going to be 75 million. We're probably going to have to get him for in the hundreds, most definitely. So we are going to approach to buy from Matthias Delict. Okay, and I think we are going to straight up just offer 100 million for Delict here and see what the Piemonte headman says. 123 million, and they want a 10% sell-on clause. That's at least another 15 million. All right, I'll do no sell-on clause, straight up 123 mil. He says, yes, Delict is in the squad, boys. Our first official signing at Newcastle after the takeover, the 320 billion pound takeover. We're putting it to good use, boys. And I think that we need to pair Delict with another great young center back, and that is Jules Koundé, who was heavily linked to Chelsea this last transfer window. And he wants to move to the Prem, boys. He wants to get out of Spain, get away from Sevilla, and I think Newcastle might be able to snatch him away from Chelsea. At least in our game today, he is going to be snatched away. We are going to approach to buy Jules Kunde. Okay, they want 90 million for him. That is well above his current value, but we got money to spare. We're going to offer 80. Let's see what they say. 80. I think they'll say yes. They go to 82. We're going to say yes to that. That is a good, a good price to pay for a young and up-and-coming uh, center back. Real quick, let's take a look at our new center back partnership of Delict and Jules Kounde. This is going to be an absolutely insane pairing, boys. Let's go. Delict at the left center back because he is... Oh, he's right-footed, but I thought he was left-footed. Damn. I think we're going to make Delict the captain. And our squad needs a lot of help at the fullback position. And at the fullback position, I love when they have pace. So I'm going with the fastest guy in the game, Alfonso Davies, the Canadian international, 20 years old, left back from Bayern Munich. We're going to approach to buy him right now. 57 million, it says he's worth. Uh, we're probably going to have to pay about, about 100 million, honestly. That's just, honestly, 100 million. We're going to go straight for 90 million here. Honestly, I doubt Bayern Munich would ever let him go. Maybe they would. I mean, I've seen a couple of transfer rumors um surrounding alfonso davies but not too many um but we're gonna straight up offer here 95 they accept it alfonso davies is gonna be at the squad boys at the left back position and to finalize the back starting four for our defense boys i think i want to round it out with ricardo Pereira. he's an 84 overall 27 year old right back from leicester city and he's not gonna cost that much honestly uh 46 to 62 million might be what we had to pay i was looking at jao cancelo and trent alexander arnold and boys we would have had to offer a lot we wouldn't have had too much left over in the bank after that um so we're gonna go for a little bit of a discount here um for someone that is still very good ricardo Pereira. we're gonna get you in the squad And of course, it is always important to have good fullbacks on your bench. Somebody that can come in and change the game. Um, and Davide 
Calabria is that guy for us. I'm going to offer for him. Um, I love him in real life because obviously I'm an AC Milan fan at heart. Um, Calabria is great. He's on the rise. He just got his first call up for Italy. And we're going to offer for the 78 overall right back. Take a look, y'all, at this new starting back line. It is absolutely ridiculous. Head and shoulders above what we had. It might be head and shoulders above the rest of the Prem League. Uh, Alfonso Davis at the left back. Matthias Delic center back with Jules Koundé. Ricardo Pereira at the right back. David De Calabria on the bench. And this four back partnership is probably going to be the best in the league. If not this year, then the next year and the next two years after that. After five defensive signings, boys, we still have $132 million left over in the bank. That's going to give us some spending options to get somebody real good. I'm thinking we are going to get a CDM, boys. Um, just to round out that midfield, um, holding midfield position. Because that is also an important position. I think Manchester United in real life is learning that right now. And our next big signing, boys, is going to be another player who is rumored uh, to want out of their current situation. And that is Declan Rice. I guess he was unhappy that West Ham put a hundred million pound price tag on him. Um, because I think that means he wants to get away from the club. And a hundred million pounds does not make it easy. But in the case of... Newcastle United with 320 billion now. I think it's chump change for them. So we are going to offer for Declan Rice here to be our holding midfielder. He is still young, so he has room to grow. These next four years are going to be bright for him and for the Newcastle future. And Declan Rice is going to slot right into that holding midfield position. Hayden is going to be moved to the bench. Here he is, Declan Rice at the CDM holding midfield position. He's going to be great there. A much needed signing to say the least. And you guys know I couldn't just keep signing all these young players. We of course need experience. Somebody that has won the Champions League before. Somebody that has been around the world and back again. And that player for us is going to be Gareth Bale. You guys might not be happy about this, but I did sign him for $30 million from Real Madrid. Um, I think he's going to slot in perfectly at the right mid position. He has told us that he still has plenty of years left in him. And uh, hopefully he uh, shows that to us. And after having 50 million left in the bank, we needed to go out and get a center attacking mid since we played two of them. And I wanted somebody that can play next to Joseph Willock and right in front of Declan Rice. And I think an experienced player, Philippe Coutinho from Barcelona, will... Uh, just bring that experience. I mean, of course, he's won the Champions League. Of course, he's been big time for Liverpool. He has stuttered a little bit at Barcelona. But in real life, Philippe Coutinho has been rumored to be Newcastle's first huge signing. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a huge signing, but it's a, a definitely big signing compared to what their history recently has been. So, Philippe Coutinho, welcome to Newcastle. After an insane summer of new signings, boys, this team is looking absolutely stacked. It is night and day compared to what it used to look like before this new takeover and 500 million boys you can get so many great players for that and i think that's what we did today we are keeping callum wilson up at the striker he's got some room to grow um say maximum at the left mid coutinho the new signing cam right next to joseph willock declan rice a new signing at the cdm gareth bale right mid new signing to bring experience um, Ricardo Pereira, the right back, Kunde center back with the lick, and Alfonso Davies at the left back. That is going to be our starting squad for the rest of the season, boys. Hopefully, season one ends up as a complete banger and a complete success. On the bench, we have David De Calabria, the new signing at right back. Uh, I don't know how to say this guy's last name. Lasseles? Lasseles? Lasseles. Um, backup center back, Almirion, backup cam, CDM Hayden, backup left back, Lewis, Joel Linton, center, uh, center striker, and Frazier at the left mid. That is our bench. Boys, we are looking so freaking good. I'm so excited for this season. Let's get into it. And the summer of transfer madness is finally over for Newcastle United. And 500 million pounds later, Newcastle United has a squad that I believe... Can compete with anybody in europe it is going to be so 
exciting to see how they do after this first year and then the three years after that because we are doing a total of four seasons for Newcastle to win as many trophies as possible and we would deem the success of this video based upon that trophy count. So season number one boys let's get it. Season number one after the Newcastle 500 million pound takeover is completed boys and I am excited to see how the team we put together finished in the Premier League, the Carabao Cup, the FA Cup. We weren't in Europe um, but I'm hoping that we're going to be in Europe next year depending on how we did this year. So let's take a look boys. Can we get top 10? Yes we do we get 7th. I think 7th is about just about where we should be right now. Just about where we should be. 7th is a pretty damn good um, starting spot, boys. 7th place in the Premier League is not a bad start. We finished on 59 points, tied with Wolves. I am not sure if 7th is enough to make the Conference League, but 7th is a good start here. Liverpool wins the league. Um, yeah, so let's go to the FA Cup. Can we go far in this? Ooh, Leicester beats Wolves. We lost to Wolves in the semis. Okay, that is pretty far. That's pretty good. Okay, Carabao Cup. Can we make the semis of this? No, we do not. Not even the quarters. Reading made the quarters. We lost to Everton in the round of four. Who won the Champions League? It is PSG in their first season with the Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe trio up front. They beat Liverpool. Wow, it must have been a good game. Four to three. Let's take a look at the Europa League. Napoli, the Italian Giants beat Manchester United. Man U loses for the second straight year in the Europa League final. That's tough for them, tough for their fans. Take a look at the new Conference League. This is what I'm hoping we're going to be in next season. Marseille beats Spurs. Wow, that is, I mean, there's some good teams in the Conference League still, so it's not a shabby tournament at all. Who was Newcastle's top goal getter? Let's take a look. Alan St. Maximin. 83 overall, he's grown. He got 17 goals and 6 assists that season. Gareth Bale was a good signing. It paid dividends. He did go down too, but he ended up getting 14 goals and 4 much-needed assists. Callum Wilson, our striker, he went up 1, but he only got 11 goals and 8 assists. We do need more production from the striker, so I'm thinking we get a striker this season, boys. This transfer window. Uh, Philippe Coutinho did a decent job in the midfield. Joe Linton off the bench did good. Where was Joseph Willock? Wow, he only played 16 games. That is not what we were hoping for. Almirian must have started over him. Seven goals and five assists. Pretty good output from him. I'm expecting Willock to start this next season. And let's begin another cam. Overall, a pretty evenly spread goal contribution chart. Season 1 after the revamped Newcastle United was a definite success, boys. We got 7th in the Premier League. I don't remember the last time Newcastle finished inside the top 10, so 7th was a, you know, it was a gift. We finished in the semifinals of the FA Cup, losing to Wolves. That was a good showing from us. And then we finished in the round of 4 in the Carabao Cup. And let's go ahead and move on to Season 2, boys. Let's get it. And I'm interested to see what the transfer budget for season two is going to look like here. 139 million. Okay, that's not too shabby. That's not 500 million that we started off with in season one. But 139 million is not too bad after all. Based on looking at the squad here, boys, I think we definitely need a new right mid. Gareth Bale played dividend for us in season number one, but he has dropped down. I'm not expecting the same output for season two. So let's go ahead and replace him. Maybe sell him too to get a little bit of extra cash back. Um, and then maybe a striker, boys. Callum Wilson didn't go up at all, and uh, his output was not very good. So I'm thinking a striker and a right mid. Get that attacking up. Our defense is freaking stacked, boys. I mean, just look at that. Maybe we get a goalkeeper too, but um, that's only if we have enough money left over. Let's go. Leon Bailey is that dude. After only spending a season with Aston Villa, he decides to join Newcastle United. Um, Newcastle spent $70 million to buy him. He's going to fit in right on that right mid side, that right wing. He gives us that much needed pace uh, on that right side, and I think he's going to fit perfectly. And boys, it is a little bit sad that we had to sell our promising left back, Jamal Lewis, who was playing on the bench as the second uh, backup to Calabria. Um, but we had to sell Jamal Lewis because I have somebody in mind that I want to get, um, and I didn't want to sell Callum Wilson to get him. Um, and you guys will see in just a second. I don't know what's wrong with this screen. So, uh, don't mind that boys, but 
Stick with me on this. This is who I wanted to get. This is who I sold Jamal Lewis for. You know him, Robert Lewandowski, the longtime Bundesliga player. He is a goal scoring machine and he is definitely going to outclass everybody else in the Prem League. He is an absolute stud, a machine, like I said. 33 years old, he is a little bit old. But he's still 91 overall and he's going to fit right into that striking position. Callum Wilson is going to get moved to the bench. And Robert Lewandowski is going to slide right into the starting lineup here, boys. Here he is going in for Callum Rice. Callum Rice? Callum Wilson. Sorry about that. Callum Wilson getting on the bench. He's going to be our super sub. Our, I can't talk right now. He's going to be our super sub striker. Lewandowski coming in. Our team is looking absolutely stacked now, boys. If we don't win the title this year... I don't know what's going on. Um, center back. Who am I missing here? Oh, Kunde. There we go. There it is, boys. That is our team. It is just ridiculous how good it is. Gareth Bale got moved to the bench. Remember, we got Leon Bailey at that right mid position there. I hope you guys like the team. I'm loving it. Season number two of the Newcastle takeover is upon us, boys. And we have Bournemouth in the first game. They must have been promoted uh, from the championship. But uh, in season two, boys, we need to get higher than seventh place in the Prem. We, I think, are in the Conference League, the Europa Conference League. So we'll see how we do in Europe. And uh, I think in the FA Cup, we finished semifinals. So hopefully we can get to the finals this year. And then hopefully we do better than round four in the Carabao Cup. I'm excited, boys. Season number two with Robert Lewandowski and Leon Bailey added to the squad. Let's freaking get it. Season number two has run its course, and it is time to see how the boys of Newcastle did. Second place. Let's go. Second place. Okay. Newcastle in the second season finishes top four. So we're going to be in the Champions League next year, boys. That is a given. We finished tied with Chelsea on points to 77. Ten points behind Liverpool. Looks like the Lewandowski uh, and Leon Bailey sightings really paid off. That is fantastic. Manchester City, the fourth. Champions League team, FA Cup. Let's see it. Ah, Liverpool beats Wolves. Oh my god, where we go out? Oh my god, we went out early. Where are we? Am I tripping right now? Did I pass us? Bro, I, I must be tripping. Yeah, I was tripping. Bro, I must be high. Oh, there we go. Round three, we lose to Leicester. That's a tough draw in the third round. Carabao Cup is up next. How do the boys do? First trophy. First official trophy against Manchester United. We dominated 4-0. Wow, beat Crystal Palace 7-3 on aggregate in the semis. Beat Liverpool. Man, we destroyed in the Carabao Cup. Let's take a look at the Champions League. We were not in it. Liverpool makes the final again, but ultimately they lose this time to Atletico de Madrid. PSG loses in the semis. Looks like the Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe situation. I'm not sure if they're on the same team still, but it looks like that didn't work out in the second season. Europa League, Manchester United gets a trophy this year. This is the third year in a row that Manchester United has made it to the Europa League final. And this is finally the first time they've won it. Oh my god, it was so close to a second trophy. It was so close to a second trophy. We lose to Stad Ren, the French team. Newcastle United is on the way up though, boys. Who do they beat on the way? Valencia on pens. Rosenberg, BK. I think that's a Norwegian team. We beat them easy. Uh, and then we beat OGC Nice, a French team. Wow. And yeah, and we got first place in the group. Great season, boys. Great season. Time for the stats, boys. Let's see who scored the most goals for us. Lewandowski. I knew it. I mean, we all knew it. He only, he only played 52 games, though. Uh, but he was our top goal scorer nonetheless 24 goals five assists that's what we got him for that he he did end up going down three which is a little bit disappointing but look at this alan st maximin 20 goals and 16 assists at the left mid position he's up three overalls this year this boy is an absolute beast what a savage and then leon bailey another great signing 18 goals and 13 assists from him Gareth Bale off the bench, 13 goals and 3 assists. Good thing we kept him. Coutinho at the midfield did good. Distributing, scoring, did his thing, 11 and 10. Alfonso Davies at the left back, 9 and 3. Callum Wilson off the bench, 8 goals. Declan Rice, hold up midfield, 7 goals. Sorry, 4 goals, 7 assists. Wow. Joseph Willock, once again, only played 21 games. Why is Almirion starting, bro? I don't get it. 
And this is what the team sheet looks like at the end of season number two. Lewandowski goes down three, but everybody else is up. Even Dubrovka, our goalkeeper, Delict and Kunde are both 90s. Wow. Wow, boys. This is insane. Another season and another success for Newcastle United. Only two seasons in and we've already made top four of the Premier League. We've got second and that's enough to put us in the Champions League next year. We have made the final of the Europa Conference League. We didn't win it, but we made the final. That's great improvement. Um, ultimately, the money is paying off, boys. The 500 million pound investment is paying off from the first season. Let's see how much we get this next season. I'm excited to see how much more we can put into this squad to make it truly world class. Season number three coming up. All right, and it is time to scroll over and take a look at what our transfer budget is going to be for season number three. 223 million. Let me know in the comment section below who you want me to get with this 200 million. This is insane. And the first signing with that new and improved transfer budget, 200 million, is going to be Mike Mignon, boys. The AC Milan goalkeeper, 86 overall, 28 years old. He is fantastic. He is literally my favorite goalkeeper now. Because, of course, I'm an AC Milan fan, but I love Mike Mignon. He's so good. I wanted to get John Luigi uh, Donnarumma here. But it's going to be very, very expensive. And plus, he betrayed AC Milan. So we're not very happy with him. And $90 million was enough to pry Mike Mignon away from AC Milan. Sadly, I hate to weaken Milan. They are my favorite club in real life. But uh, I had to do it for this experiment, boys. Newcastle's buying everybody. I'm sure they're going to break a lot of people's hearts by taking their favorite players from their favorite teams. But Mike Mignon, boys, he is an upgrade over... Dubrovka there's no doubt about that and uh one by one our squad's just getting better and better my dudes I don't know how I just pulled this off but it was the finesse of the century we got Bruno Fernandez an 89 overall he was valued at like 104 million but they wanted 120 to 190 million or something and we only had 120 million in the bank so I gave them Dubrovka so I offered a player swap and 110 million and they accepted. Manchester United has just gotten weaker. And Newcastle has just gotten stronger with Bruno Fernandes now in the starting lineup. This, this is insane. And it works perfectly because then we can put Almerian on the reserves. Put Willock in the, on the bench. And Bruno Fernandes in the starting lineup, boys. There it is. That is going to be a deadly midfielding like quintuple. Maximan. Coutinho, Rice, Fernandez, and Bailey. That midfield duo. I, I was going to say duo, but it's, it's a quintuplet, bro. Five of them. It's going to be ridiculous. Our team is absolutely stacked this year, my guys. Season number three is getting started here with the FA Community Shield against Liverpool. Remember, boys, we got second last year in the Premier League. We won the Carabao Cup. That was our first trophy and our only trophy so far because we were so close to winning the Conference League. We lost in the finals. Uh, but here we are now boys season number three we got Bruno Fernandez in the squad and we got Mike Mignon our goalkeeper in the squad we are getting better every single season we are getting money in every single season it's insane what 500 million you start with how that trickles down to how much you get every season depending on your investments and there's no doubt in my mind that Newcastle is going to make crazy investments going to get crazy players just like we did in this um simulation so far if not better they're gonna do so uh season number three boys let's hope for the best let's get some more trophies let's see what newcastle can do in season number three and season number three of the newcastle takeover has come to an end boys i'm excited to see how newcastle does in their third season now they're pretty much a top club they got second last year in the prem they won the carabao cup and finished in the final of the uh, Euro uh, Europa Conference League. This year we are in the Champions League and this year we are expecting another top four finish, maybe even first, and we will see hopefully another Carabao Cup or FA Cup somewhere in there. Uh, just to get some trophies up the trophy count. Can we win the Premier League? Yes, we do. Newcastle just edges out Manchester United. That is big time. Wow. Thinking about it now, Bruno Fernandes was a huge pickup because he took away from Manchester United, gave to us. Newcastle just barely edges out Man U, 82 points. 
Uh, Chelsea in third, Arsenal in fourth, Man City fifth, Liverpool sixth, Spurs in seventh. So the big six was right behind us, in order. FA Cup, this could be trophy number three in our cabinet. No, it's not. Burnley, bro? Burnley, I swear, Burnley beat us on the way. Oh my god, they did. They beat us in the semifinals 4 to 3. Bro, what is that semifinals? QPR and Wolves, Burnley and New Newcastle. This is the FA Cup. That's insane. Carabao Cup. Could we win it for the second year running? No, we can't. Man City beats Spurs 3 0. Where did Newcastle drop? Newcastle dropped to Sheffield United in the third round. It is time to see who the champions of Europe are. Roma? Looks like Jose Marino uh, really turned Roma around on there. He's doing it in real life, but doing it in the game is a different story. They beat Chelsea. That's crazy. They beat Liverpool on the way. Where did Newcastle fall? We're not even in the quarters. Round of 16, Newcastle loses to Piemonte Calcio, 5-3 on aggregate. We did top our group. Dortmund didn't even make it through. Tough group. Europa League was Borussia Dortmund. And the Conference League winners were Spurs. And it is time to check who the top goal scorers of the Premier League champions Newcastle were this year. Let's take a look. Scroll over to the stats. Goals. Bruno Fernandes. The number one signing of season number three gets 32 goals and 14 assists in 58 appearances. That is, that's phenomenal. That's just phenomenal. Lewandowski goes down a little bit this year, 21-5. St. Maximan, he has been, he's really been our most consistent guy this whole journey so far. Um, so maybe in real life they don't get rid of St. Maximan. I would love to see him stay there. I think he is a great player and he's young. Uh, Leon Bailey, another great signing for us. He played on the right mid, remember, and uh, he actually ended up growing a lot. Uh, and he did very well, 14 and 9 for us. Coutinho, another solid year. He's been Mr. Consistent too. Uh, and then the rest of these guys. Did Willock play at all? Bro, did I skip him? Oh, there he is. He scored one goal. Okay, it's not bad. And the season four transfer budget is absolutely fat, boys. The second highest of the experiment so far. Um, second only to the first season, which was 500 million, of course. Uh, 245 million this season, boys. I, I think we need a striker. Lewandowski is getting old. He's an 85 overall now. Uh, he can move to the bench while we get somebody big time. I'm not going to say who it is yet because I haven't decided personally, but I'll let you guys know when I do. And our first bit of business in this season four transfer window, boys, was getting a free agent. I know it's a little bit different than what you might have expected, but Joel Matip was a free agent and I couldn't resist to say yes. The temptation was there. He is going to be on the bench for us. Now we have an 83 center back on the bench. Boys, we are, we are building this squad all around we're not just going to be a great starting team we are going to have great bench players as well and this is the man i want to get boys erling holland the borussia dortmund wonder kid uh it's going to be close we have 200 and what i say 45 million and they want just about that so we're going to see if we can get him we are going to approach to buy right now if we can get this man into the squad it would be an absolutely great signing it would just put us above and beyond the rest of europe there's no doubt in my mind we're gonna straight up offer 200 million to start with see what they say what do they rebuttal with they put 100 million on that 307 million in total that is an absurd ask come on give me something to work with give me something to work with here oh my god bro we're gonna have to player swap somebody here I'm thinking it might be time to get rid of Callum Wilson if they will accept it. He's worth 21 million. We're gonna do 240 million flat rate. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's see what they say here, boys. I don't. I doubt they're gonna say yes to this. Okay, they're gonna take some time to think about it. That's better than a straight up no. That's better than them storming off. It seems like they might be interested in Callum Wilson. I guess we'll see what they say. Oh my god, they accepted it, boys. Take a look at this. Dortmund has come back and accepted the 240 million pound offer swap deal with Callum Wilson for Erling Holland. 
I'm 100% going to accept this, boys. We are going to move Lewandowski to the bench and bring in the wonder kid of all wonder kids right now, the absolutely unstoppable stud that is Erling Haaland. Wow. What a signing this is. And that just about wiped us out, boys. Lewandowski is going to be put on the bench. The young and up-and-coming stud Erling Haaland is going to be the starter now. Wow. Now look at this squad. I mean, come on. There's no way we lose the Premier League this year. We have to win either the Carabao or FA Cup. And we have to win the Champions League. I am expecting the treble for Newcastle this year. Look around our squad in just four seasons. Not even four seasons. It's been three and a half. Three full seasons. We're in the transfer window uh, going into the fourth season. we got an 86 right back, 91 and 92 center backs, 88 left back, 88 St. Maximen who who is the only remaining player still on the squad from the original Newcastle team. Coutinho has gone up. He's been better than expected. Rice, uh, 87. Fernandez, 90. Leon Bailey, 88. And Erling Holland, 93. And look at our bench, boys. Only one guy, two guys under 80. That's fine with me, honestly. Our team is absolutely stacked. The fourth and final season is here, and it starts out with the FA Community Shield against Burnley. Our second FA Community Shield in a row. You know what? I don't think I looked to see if we won that last year. I think we were facing Liverpool. But that is besides the point. We want the Champions League this year, boys. And I think we have a good shot at getting it. Nobody even comes close to touching how good of a team we have got. All around, our depth, our starting lineup, our goal scorers. Our defense is out of this world, boys. Our goalkeeper is great. It's just it's just impossible to beat us. I'm telling you. If we don't win the Champions League this year, I'm going to cry. But this is the fourth and final season of the Newcastle United Takeover Experiment today, boys. Let's go. The fourth and final season has winded to a close here, boys. I am, like, insanely pumped here. Um, I really hope Newcastle won the Champions League. I'm sure we won the Prem, and I'm sure we got a Carabao or an FA Cup, at least one of those. Um, but we have to win this Champions League, boys. There's no one else in Europe that can touch our team. Our team's ridiculous. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. If Newcastle wins this Champions League this year in this fourth season, the last season of the video, I'll get a Newcastle jersey and I'll hang it up probably right around here. I will get a Newcastle jersey and I will put it up behind me on my wall. That's how confident I am that we are going to win here. But first, let's take a look at the Premier League for two seasons in a row. Newcastle are champions, even more so this year. They win by seven above Chelsea, 91 points. That's impressive. Newcastle United is a new, the new dominant powerhouse of English football. Community Shield, we were in this, and we did win. We're not going to count it as a trophy, but it's still a win. That's dope. FA Cup. This would be a trophy. We haven't won the FA Cup before. This would be the first one. Yes, we do. We beat Leicester City. Let's go. That's two trophies this year, boys. We could get the quadruple if we win the Carabao and Champions League finals. This would be dope. Carabao Cup. Don't tell me. Tell me. Please tell me. No. No. Wolves beat Man U. Oh, we didn't even make the semis. We lose... Bro, we lost to Norwich in the sem the quarters. We lost to Norwich in the quarterfinals. Let's take a look at the Conference League first. Stad Ren beats Sporting. That's the second time they've won it in this video. They beat us uh, the second season of the video. The Europa League. I mean, it's possible we got bumped down, but no, we didn't. Man, City ends up beating Nice. I mean, at least I don't think we did. No, we didn't. This is it, boys. This is it. Get ready. Get ready. I'm taking my sweatshirt off. Taking it off. Let's go. Champions League. All right, I'm putting my sweatshirt back on. That was bullshit, bro. Chelsea and Barcelona? Chelsea wasn't... Yeah, I guess they were second in the Premier League this year. Damn. So I guess they had a decent squad, but come on. Damn it. We didn't even make the semis. We lost to Manchester United. You got to be kidding me. I wonder if Ronaldo's still there. I doubt it. This is four years past. 
No way Ronaldo's still on Man U. But they beat us anyways. 4-3 to three on aggregate. That is sad. That's sad. We beat Leipzig 5-1 easy. Who do we have in the group stage? Atalanta, Leverkusen, Royal Antwerp. <laughs> How do we lose in the court? The, was it quarterfinals to Manchester United? That's sad, man. That's sad. Looks like I'm not getting the Newcastle jersey, boys. I still might get one, anyways. I think I'm a new fan of Newcastle because I don't know. They just. Newcastle's lit. Although I am sad, I am ready to take a look at the top goal scorers and I am excited about it. Erling Holland, 40 goals and 3 assists. 40 goals for Erling Holland, the beast himself. Bruno Fernandes had a monster year too. 32 goals and 11 assists. They both had 43 goal contributions just by themselves. That's insane. Leon Bailey, another great season. St. Maxi, man. I can't even, he's at a 91. I can't even say enough about this, man. I'm so happy we were able to keep him on the squad the whole entire four seasons. Philippe Coutinho, what a great pickup that was. He was Mr. Consistent as well. Double digits and double digit assists both seasons. Or three seasons that he was here. Alfonso Davies, great job at the left back position. Lewandowski, four goals in 14 games off the bench. That's decent. Wow. Wow, what a season this was, boys. It should have ended with the Champions League title in our cabinet, but we'll take two more trophies, the EPO and the FA Cup. And this is the squad that we are going to finish the episode with. Erling Holland is up to a 94. St. Maximan, I am so happy we were able to keep him for the long term for all four seasons. He's up to a 91. I hope Newcastle keeps him in real life. Alfonso Davies at the left back position finishes at a 90. Delict at a 93 as well as Kunde. How could we lose with those guys back there? Mignon in 89. Pereira 87. Leon Bailey 89. Bruno Fernandez a 92. And Declan Rice in 89. Our bench was fantastic as well. Only one guy under 80. Man. That will conclude this intense rebuild of Newcastle United, a team that now has the richest owners in club footballing history. But even with that $320 billion and an unlimited amount of funds, nothing can guarantee victories at the highest level of European football. However, within this four-season experimental rebuild, Newcastle reached the summit of English football twice and added an FA Cup and a Carabao Cup to the trophy cabinet along the way. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if Newcastle was able to accomplish the same standards that we have set in this video in real life. So good luck to Newcastle and good luck to their fans. The world will be watching. And thank you guys for choosing to watch this video today. Make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you guys on the next one. Later.